you know, th- it's very interesting. So I've recently been uh, deeply diving into anarcho-communism, which really <laughs> should just be called communism, yeah. because that was ideally the end state, was to yes, end the state. Yes. Um, but it, it's very interesting how they, there's this underlying belief that it's, it's simply more productive to have collective ownership. And it's, it's like, well, okay, you can keep asserting it, but the facts don't represent it. And Marx recognizes this in the Communist Manifesto. Oh, yeah. He, you know, he, he calls he calls the the expansion of the bourgeoisie. Um, he he remarks something like, "Who knew such productive forces slumbered in the lap of social labor?" It's like yeah. it's not social labor; yeah. it's private labor. Yeah, yeah. you liar. You yeah. know? and and you see, Marx is a materialist, mm. so so all he sees is labor, yes. labor in the sense of physical physical activity. What he should really be saying is, "Who knew that that such uh, you know this slumbered in the in the minds of men?" Because real production comes out of the human mind. It doesn't come from muscle. And that's something Marxists have no appreciation for. Mm-hmm. And, and while we are somewhat, you know, you could argue that we are somewhat uh, equal in our ability to pull levers and to do uh, physical labor, we are clearly not equal when it comes to, to, to mental activity. Steve Jobs is oh, yeah. far smarter than I am, particularly when it comes to, 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 to devising, yeah. you know, new gadgets. And, so the inequality that happens is a complete result of the fact that just our, our ability to imagine, our ability to, to create, our ability to think through problems is vastly different. And, and that's just a, a sta- an existential state. Now what Marx wants us is in a sense he wants to change human nature. Mm-hmm. And, and, and of course that's why they have to be genocidal. Because they, they have to assume that there's certain people who can change. Mm-hmm. And, and they've experienced capitalism and they're post-capitalist and now they're into this you know, they've changed and they've evolved into this Marxist utopia. And then there's some people who either haven't experienced capitalism yet, or just, as Engels would put it, right, they just genetically are incapable of being good socialists. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and because it's an internationalist idea, it's not a state idea, mm-hmm. you have to wipe them out. You have to get rid of them because they're an incumbent on, on this wonderful socialist utopia. And it's why communism is, is genocidal well before uh, Nazism became genocidal, and the, the, the socialists were already exterminate, trying to exterminate certain races. And that, that's not the only genocidal aspect to it. Like, like we were saying just before we set up, I mean, they, they want to genocide a class of people. Yes. They, they, I mean, and this is, I mean, you, you don't choose your class. Yes. Otherwise, everyone would choose to become upper class. Yes. Like race, class is something you were born into, you had no control over, and there's no reason why you should just be genocided on that basis. It, but, and it drives me crazy when people say, oh, the, at least the communists didn't want to wipe anyone out. Oh. Yes, they do. Then how did how did about two hundred? Well, I don't know the exact number, but somewhere between a hundred to two hundred million people get murdered yeah. just by accident. Yeah, you know, it's clearly Stalin wanted to wipe out the Ukrainians, so he he orchestrated yeah. a famine in Ukraine and let them starve. Clearly, Mao Zedong wanted wanted to, to, to eradicate sixteen million people. Chinese died of starvation, yeah. partially because the economic system inherently leads to starvation mm-hmm. because they don't produce. It's the mo- It's the least productive system in human history, yep. uh, as 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 the Chinese farms, communal farms, were, were clear <laughs> proof of. You know, I don't know. You know the story how Chinese farming became privatized. Um, I, I it's, it's, it's a great know. story. So this is in the late seventies. Mao had died already. Yeah. And this little village in the center of China, far away from anything, they were starving, and and they, they weren't <laughs> producing. Imagine my surprise. <laughs> and, and 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 they were they were they were being attacked by the Central Committee because they weren't meeting their quotas. Right. And they said, look, we, we're desperate. we we got to try something. So they, they did a town council in secret. They didn't invite the communist commissar. Mm-hmm. And they said, why don't we do this? You, you, this is your piece of land. And, and this piece of land will be my piece of land. And anything you do there, you get the surplus you can keep. And, and we'll just try this experiment. And uh, it's not really how, you know, they, they weren't actually creating private property. They're creating a pseudo private property because yeah. the state still owned it all. Yeah. And the next year, they were far exceeding, exceeding their the quotas. And what happened was that, that they, people in the Central Committee noticed this. And they said, well, you know, what's going on there? They never used to be like this. So they sent people to investigate. And they were discovered. And the there, were people, there were people in the Communist Party who wanted to you know, wipe them out, basically, to, yeah. to teach a yeah. lesson. And luckily, the, the, the Deng Xiaoping at the time was, was the premier. He basically said no. He said... He was a complete pragmatist. Now he was an evil guy. He was responsible for Tiananmen Square, and he was responsible for a lot of deaths under, in the in the pre-cultural revolution. Uh, but but by this point, he had wised up enough to what works and what doesn't. And he said, "Look, communal farming obviously doesn't work. This works. 
And I don't know why this works, because he didn't understand the theory. I don't know why this works, but this works. Get another three villages and let's try it over there. And they did. And it worked there too. And he said, okay, let's, let's basically move to private farming. And the land is still owned by the state, but let's, let's do the pseudo private property thing where you have private farm. And that's how it happened. So in China, you got an example where pragmatists like Deng, Deng Xiaoping, who was a communist, he believed in communism, but he was a pragmatist, saw that, ex that, that the Marxist theory is unproductive, it is destructive. And